Yet now, with all of their photographs made, and strata of new experiences pressing down on those older ones, whether they will pulverize or happily fossilize remains to be learned. It seems to me that I know those three persons equivalently, and maybe even well enough, which is to say that my act of representing them has carved out in the hard, black basalt of my heart three comparable memory chambers. That's nothing but psychological projection, which I practice when trying to imagine Chief Joseph or Eric the Red for one of my novels. Presently, after travel, study, and effort, I begin to see my subjects before me, a result compounded of 15% hubris, 5% wishful thinking, 50% facts, no matter that some of these are bound to be rejected by future historians and archaeologists, and 30% love, empathy, social instincts, or whatever it is that makes me read a biography, take a photograph, or get to know someone. Because making my photogenic drawing of Varia drew me as close to her, or to some real or pretended aspect of her, as looking at Paula's portrait after nearly 30 years of friendship now makes me feel toward her, the projection, one tends to think, must be false. Or maybe as trivial or hackneyed as calling them all, in 19th century style, kindred daughters of Eve. But this is not to deny the sincerity of such feelings. Perhaps all that can be said about these three portraits is that they are shadows of love, shadows of loneliness. Once, my fifth grade science teacher asked me pityingly, Bill, do you ever live in the real world? I cannot say for certain that I have ever visited that place, nor do I necessarily wish to. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Leaf by Leaf. Today I'm excited to share the publication, finally, of the highly anticipated, long-awaited, two-volume box set, Shadows of Love, Shadows of Loneliness, by William T. Volman. This is a joint effort between Rare Bird and Unnamed Books. It's a retrospective of over 40 years of Volman's work in photography, drawings, prints, and paintings. And for those of you like me who have read Afghanistan Picture Show, Poor People, Imperial, Rising Up and Rising Down, among his many, many other works, let me be clear that very, very few of the photographs are repeated in this collection. And those that are, are in a much better presentation quality. He also leaves out all of the pencil sketches that appear in his trade fiction, such as the Seven Dreams books. What we have here are two beautiful, high quality, oversized art books in a cloth bound box set, complete with a bifold certificate of authenticity signed by the author. The box set with the certificate is limited in quantity. The first volume of this set comprises his photographs and includes about 60 pages of text. The second volume comprises his drawings, prints, and paintings and includes about 40 pages of text. Mostly though, we get what Bill himself wished and that is a large number of full page plates. Each volume also includes a very nice and generous fold out in the very center of the book and indexes with captions to all of the plates. We even get a nice reproduction of one page of the 700 page FBI file on Volman that was begun when they suspected him of being the Unabomber. His writing has his signature loose but informed tone, always arcing between technical, novelistic, funny, and sardonic. For example, at one point he says, Now for my excitement, I watch my country waddle toward a tin-pot dictatorship and my planet burn off excess life. In the caption to a picture that has a younger Volman looking rather haggard and worn down, it reads, Poor old WTV had malaria. As he says, part of the purpose of publishing these volumes is to share with us the joys he has found in 19th century printing processes. He shares with us that he became a photographer for the same reason that he became a writer, out of a desire to express and preserve human experience. And we find that these books represent a very fractional sampling of the larger archive, which is currently being held at The Ohio State University. 
I highly recommend the Volmania podcast. They have an episode right now in which they actually interview William T. Volman himself about the publication of Shadows of Love, Shadows of Loneliness. Between these books themselves and the interview, we find that Volman is still at work on his forthcoming novel, The Table for Fortune, which is at 3,400 manuscript pages right now. He also happens to have just been fired at the end of last year by his longtime publisher, Viking, which is a shame, but Grove is already looking at the new novel. There's also apparently a forthcoming digital and enhanced unabridged version of Rising Up and Rising Down. Sadly, his daughter Lisa passed in 2022 while he was working on these books. And so the photograph on the back of volume two is exceptionally poignant. And as we find out from the podcast episode, he recently got struck by a car again, but he's recovering very nicely. The more I read through the details of his processes, with his genuine love of the crafts seeping through the prose and the visuals, the more I realized just how perfect or complementary such artistic endeavors are to the developing of his writer's eye for detail. And indeed, on the heels of sharing his love for gum printing, he talks about going around and seeing things through his gum printer's gaze. For me, I echo Jordan Rothacker's love for William T. Volman's acrylics and watercolors. They are particularly striking and something I had never seen before. His work in the second volume recalls elements of Matisse, Van Gogh and Gauguin, a sort of mix of French Impressionism and German Expressionism. And some plates are obvious homages to William Blake, though, as Volman points out in these books, he didn't have to do what poor old William did and write out his text backwards so that the printing would come out the right way. Even if you're only a fan of Volman's novels and essays and journalism, and not so much a fan of the visual art or visual art in general, I still highly recommend these volumes, if for nothing else, than to continue to fund Volman's work and his various projects, of which he notoriously has a great many going on at the same time. He still has two dreams to finish, in addition to The Table for Fortune. As he says at the end of his introductory page to volume one, and let me also thank you, reader, for supporting me yet a trifle longer. It is thanks to you that I have not needed to work an honest job since 1986. I love his work from the subarctic Canadian Inuit town of Coral Harbor. He says that here I identified and explained myself as Bill the Tourist. I was the first tourist whom many of them had ever met. Teenagers and children began to investigate me. They were especially interested in how I defecated and whether the other white people where I came from were as ugly as I. I said I was special that way. They asked about my romantic life and I said that I was doing my best. A boy consoled me that not long ago, even a man with a wooden leg had gotten a girlfriend. So there might be hope for me. I thanked him for giving me such glorious aspirations. 